friends in our last few sessions we are focusing on statistical quality control and uh, particularly if we discuss the last session where we focused on process capability analysis so we discuss that uh, sometime our processes are matching with respect to their capability with the specifications given for production purpose but sometime it is possible that processes are less capable and we have a very stringent specifications and in that particular case uh, we need to see how to improve the process capabilities in our earlier discussions we discussed about uh, various types of quality control tools and we also discussed that the japanese system of manufacturing says continuous improvement kaizen so that uh, you can continuously improve your process capabilities the idea of improving the process capability is very simple which we discussed in the previous session that how can we minimize the variations in our processes if we can minimize the variations in our processes that is uh, a single point address towards the improvement of uh, process capability so reducing variation means improving the process capability a very important concept came in this direction about the process capability improvement and uh, that has become a very popular concept across the globe and uh, it is now being applied not only in manufacturing industry but uh, whatever type of service organization you talk whether it is healthcare whether it is postal whether it is restaurant whether it is airline whether it is banking everywhere you will find the application of this concept and this concept is known as six sigma we have already introduced the meaning of sigma sigma is the standard deviation that how much you are deviating from the mean values now in our previous session we have discussed the concept of a central limit theorem now in the central limit theorem we discussed that uh, the samples whatever sample you are taking from the process the mean of those samples are normally arranged that means whenever you have uh, some mean of a sample they will follow the normal distribution curve and this is the essence of our six sigma discussion now when we are discussing the six sigma it is important to know that many a times nowadays the meaning of entire quality management is only around the six sigma it has become such a popular topic so we will go to some theoretical aspect also to discuss the six sigma it is more practical in nature how to implement the six sigma and how to measure the success in terms of six sigma that is more important but uh, at the same time some philosophical issues some theoretical issues behind the six sigma are equally important so let us start our discussion with those concepts which are behind six sigma so a business process for improving quality reducing cost and increasing customer satisfaction use six sigma so all these three things can be simultaneously fulfilled because the idea of six sigma is reducing variation so if you are able to deliver consistently same level of quality it will increase the customer satisfaction if you are able to consistently reduce the wastage in your production process that will reduce the cost of your production process again it will help in either getting more profit or reducing the cost and that will help in improving the customer satisfaction so when you are continuously if uh, nowadays let's say uh, it is uh, the time of e-commerce and uh, you are placing an order on some e-commerce site and uh, you know 
that uh, you click the order button and the products will be delivered at your doorstep uh, within 17 hours and all the time products are delivered at your doorstep uh, on the 17th hour that means uh, you can plan your uh, movement uh, whether to remain in house or you can go outside for other shopping activities accordingly you know that uh, around six, six, 16 to 18 hour the packet will be delivered to my house so you can plan your movement accordingly and uh, that obviously increases your satisfaction level so six sigma is a very important business process so the first important point is that it is a business process the second important thing is statistically six sigma means having no more than 3.4 defects per million opportunity in any process products or service so we will discuss this very point in more detail in our coming slides but uh, you can remember this particular value that uh, 3.4 defects per million 3.4 defects per million that is the level of uh, reduction of defects so almost you can say almost uh, zero defect uh, are available in case of six sigma quality labels so that is uh, almost negligible number of defects in your production system now objectives are reducing defects reducing cost reducing product or process variability reducing delivery time increasing productivity or improving customer satisfaction so all those things which you desire in your organization that uh, how i can improve the quality how i can reduce the lead time how I can reduce the wastage, how I can reduce the cost, how I can improve my competitiveness, how I can improve my productivity, all these things are simultaneously possible if you understand the meaning of Six Sigma and if you are able to implement the Six Sigma in right spirit. The right spirit is very important. So, almost all those things which we want to have in our organization are possible with the implementation of Six Sigma. Now, what is the Six Sigma component? It has uh, two components, the management component and technical component. In the management component, it involves providing a strong leadership, defining performance criteria, selecting projects which can likely to achieve business results and selecting and training appropriate people. These are the different type of uh, managerial actions which are required in a Six Sigma implementation process. That means uh, one is uh, leadership, the top management commitment that we have already discussed if you remember in our TQM class. The second is how are you going to measure your performance that is the second important uh, label the third is because six sigma is implemented in organizations in project modes so you need to identify those projects which are likely to achieve business results and the fourth is you need to identify and provide a specific training to those resources those uh, manpower in your organization who are responsible for six sigma implementation and uh, some of you may be knowing that there are different labels of training so finally you achieve the black belt uh, training label in the six sigma so there are different labels of training so you may have the green belt and then you can go to finally uh, black belt label so uh, proper training is also very important proper certification that is also very important for the uh, proper implementation of six sigma philosophy then there are certain technical issues also so these are the managerial issues then there are certain technical issues what are those technical issues it involves improving processes performance 
So, you have to improve the process performance that is number 1 reducing variation how to improve the process capability so that you can reduce the variations. Then third is utilization of statistical methods because Six Sigma is highly influenced by statistical calculations. Therefore, this term uh, Sigma in the name itself uh, that six standard deviation Sigma is uh, the name given for standard deviation. So, uh, that is uh, so how to use the statistical methods and designing a structured improvement strategy. We will see in few minutes that there is a very systematic process of implementation of uh, Six Sigma which is known as DMIC and uh, for implementation of that DMIC uh, you require sustained uh, structured innovation strategy unless until you know how to improve this particular activity you will not be able to implement Six Sigma. So, the structured innovation system structured innovation approach is required for improving your current processes. Then uh, which involves definition, measurement, analysis, improvement and control that is nothing but DMIC. So, this DMIC is uh, that structured innovative strategy for implementation of Six Sigma. So, these are the two important uh, approaches management approach and technical by combining both these uh, management and technical approach you will be able to achieve the Six Sigma. So, Six Sigma implementation and it has it has components from both these management and technical side. Now, before we move further to discuss the implementation of Six Sigma, let us put some time for understanding the philosophy of Six Sigma that uh, how we are able to get this 3.4 defects per million kind of things in our process. What we are doing? So, our numbers have reduced so drastically that almost we have reached the situation of zero defect. So, for that purpose let us understand the philosophy of Six Sigma. Here I am making a graph and these are my product specification. This is upper limit this is lower limit. Now, I am making the process uh, in this process my process mean this is situation A. In situation A the process mean is exactly the mean of specification and this is uh, 3 sigma this is also 3 sigma. Now, the area under this curve area under this normal curve which is uh, having upper limit and lower limit exactly at 6 sigma label. So, if you remember this is case 1 of process capability. Where we calculated the value of process capability index and that is upper limit minus lower limit divided by 6 sigma. And you see the upper limits and lower limits are already apart by 6 sigma. So, process capability in this case is coming 1. So, process capability is just touching the Six Sigma label and we know that Six Sigma is uh, taking how much area 99.74 percent. 
area is under this 6 sigma. So, you know that uh, point 27 parts per 100 unit are defective or you can say 2700 parts per million are outside the acceptable limits. So, this system is producing 2700 parts per million which are outside the acceptable limits. So, that looks a very huge number that out of 1 million, out of 1 million 2700 parts are defective. So, that is a very, very stressful information for us. So, this is the A. Now, I am drawing another axis B. B. This B B is also having the same mean, it also has the same mean, but now what is done that I have done some improvement activities, I have done some improvement activities and as a result of that improvement activities my process variability has reduced. My most of the values, most of the output of this process are around the mean values. So, my spread is now reduced. So, the shape of my curve is like this and what I have done that I have targeted my improvement in such a manner that the process variability just becomes the half of my previous case. So, so in the earlier case in A A case this much one side of mean was 3 sigma, but now my process variability has been halved. So, the same area is now taking care of 6 sigma. So, this is plus minus 6 sigma on either side of mean value and most of the values you are seeing are around the mean value and the total area is in this particular case the total area under this uh, curve is 9.9997 percent and therefore, you will have uh, you will have this is 9.99974 and therefore, we have already discussed that uh, you will get only 3.4 defects per million. So, only 3.4 parts per million are defective or you can also translate this into more uh, useful number that is 2 parts per billion, 2 parts per billion numbers are defective in case of a 6 sigma activity. So, that is uh, how you have used the same specification the upper limit and lower limit, uh, but now you have increased your area of acceptance. So, earlier only 99.74 percent area was under the acceptance limit. Now, my 99.9997 percent area is under the acceptance limit. So, therefore, I am able to accept more number of parts and I am rejecting only 2 parts per billion which is practically 0 kind of thing. So, therefore, the 6 sigma offers this direct economic advantage that how because of increasing the area under acceptance region I am able to improve my performance and I am able to have the rejection of just 2 parts per billion. So, even when you compare these two situations, you will see that 6 sigma is having either 3.4 parts per million. So, if I am saying that if I am making 1 million cars, if I am making 1 million cars, so in this diagram A A, you may have 2700 defective cars, 
out of 1 million cars you may have 2700 defective cars but in case your organization is six sigma complied organization in that case in 1 million you will have just 3.4 cars as defective or out of 1 billion you will have only two cars which are defective so you can see that how drastically the numbers have changed just by increasing the sigma label the numbers have changed drastically from 2700 parts per million to 3.4 parts per million or 2 parts per billion so that is the philosophy behind the implementation of uh, six sigma and therefore all the organization because of this uh, numeric advantage we have come from 2700 parts per million to 3.4 parts per million and uh, that is the beauty of uh, six sigma activity now the six sigma methodology how are we going to implement the six sigma and uh, for that purpose as i told you already that uh, we will do it in a very systematic uh, uh, fashion and uh, that systematic fashion is coming from uh, this particular acronym that is DMIC that consists of define, measure, analyze, improve and control. So, DMAIC this is the most powerful framework for the implementation of Six Sigma. It looks very simple define measure analyze these things are ok you can define the problem you can do some uh, uh, checklist for uh, measuring those uh, particular parameters and then you can analyze the results also using the quality control tools such as uh, perito diagram or uh, fishbone diagram etc you can analyze the results also but improve and control i consider these two are the most difficult things you have to be very very innovative in developing solutions to solve the problems because problems are there since long so it is a very important challenging task that how do you motivate people for making some improvement in their work practices and then you also want to have control because it was believed that if control is not there people will not work so uh, many of us understand this particular point that uh, how in india particularly that uh, pushing every time is very important and that is about the improvement of your work and it has to go consistently though it is done in a project mode you have uh, some kind of project activity in which uh, Six Sigma is implemented. But uh, we need to have in our organizations uh, continuous availability of the projects uh, so that uh, every time whenever an opportunity is there you can take a project in any place not only in your campus any place uh, and you see that uh, how you are going to improve the processes. So, that is about uh, Six Sigma methodology. Now, another important thing <coughs> which we discussed that we need to have a proper measurement criteria for measuring these Six Sigma labels and that proper measurement criteria is known as defects per million opportunity which is abbreviated as DPMO. DPMO is defects per million opportunities. So, first you should be careful in identifying that how many opportunities of defects are there. Like this pen example I give you again and again. In this particular pen how many opportunities of defects are there. Let us say something is to be printed here on this pen something is to be printed here, but uh, because of pressure of the work the vendor missed printing of that particular statement at the cap of this print and similarly many such examples are possible where you may create defects because there are multiple opportunities of defects in a single item and some of you uh, may do one defect may do two defects may do three defects so one product 
may have multiple opportunities of defect. So, this is a similar to our C chart. If you remember in case of attributes in those particular cases where more than one type of defects are possible, you are not answering only in terms of yes or no, but more than one type of categories are possible for the customers. So, that is not going to help us and here we will see that how we are going to combine all those different categories under one umbrella term and that umbrella term is DPMO defects per million opportunity. Now, the DPMO calculation involves three important things. One is total number of defects, how many total number of defects are there, then number of opportunities for error per unit in a particular product in a particular unit, how many opportunities of defects are there. So, like I am wearing this shirt, there may be some 4 5 opportunities of defect, maybe these buttons are not properly stitched, maybe the fitting is not appropriate, maybe the colors are not appropriate, maybe the collar is not properly designed. So, these all are the opportunities of defect. So, number of opportunities for error per unit into number of units. So, this is the formula. But to convert this formula in terms of uh, our standard terms uh, that whether it is 3.4 millions per opportunity or 2 parts per billion let us understand and therefore, we are multiplying this with uh, 1 million. So, this is uh, the formula for the calculation of uh, defects per million opportunities. Now, we will see one uh, numerical or you can say one calculation on DPMO formula and that will give us that how are we using this formula for determining whether the process is in 6 sigma limits or going beyond the 6 sigma limits. If your DPMO is coming within the limit that is 3.4 parts per million, then we say that the process is in 6 sigma limits. But if DPMO calculation comes more than 3.4, then we will say that no, it is not, it is giving more defects, therefore, this is still not 6 sigma. So, uh, that is how you continuously improve also. Let us see this uh, example. A manufacturing company has been inspecting units of output from a process. Each product inspected is evaluated on 5 criteria. If the unit does not meet standards for the criteria, it counts as a defect for the unit. Each unit could have as few as 0 defects and as many as 5. So, number of defects vary from 0 to 5. After inspecting 2000 units, number of units inspected are 2000, they discovered 33 defects. What is the DPMO measure for this particular process? So, DPMO as we have already discussed, number of defects divided by number of opportunities and number of opportunities are total number of pieces and how many defects are possible in a particular product, particular uh, uh, plant. And therefore, 33 divided by number of uh, units, you inspected 2000 units and each unit may have up to 33 defects. And uh, number of opportunities per unit, these are 5 sorry, this is 5. So, 2000 into 5 that is in the denominator. So, the calculation says that DPMO is 33 that is the total number of defects, the possibility of defect in a particular product that is 5, the total number of products you inspected that is 2000 and this is 1 million. So, this DPMO calculation is coming which is 
not acceptable because it has to come within 3.4. Here the DPMO is much higher than the DPMO label came theoretically that is 3.4. So, process is not in 6 sigma limits. This process is not in 6 sigma limits because the value of DPMO is sufficiently high. If this value of DPMO comes to be 1, 2, 3 or in some minus values if uh, product is of that type, uh, then it is uh, saying that uh, it is a 6 sigma process. But right now DPMO is coming 330 and uh, that therefore, we will say that uh, the process is not in 6 sigma. With this we have understood the various meanings of uh, 6 sigma aspects. We discussed the philosophy of 6 sigma, we discussed how to calculate 6 sigma and then we also discussed that how to take projects of 6 sigma with the help of D -mic, D -M -A -I -C concept that without defining, measuring, analyzing, improving and controlling 6 sigma implementation is not possible. So, with this we come to end of this session. Thank you very much.